We now reach the, the final part of text chapter eight, the journey back. And we are going to do 8.9, healing as a correction, as corrected perception. This is again the Christ mind speaking with us, Holy Spirit, the voice for God in us, talking to our separated mind, bringing us back into our united Christ mind, right mind. I have said before, the Holy Spirit is the answer. And the Holy Spirit, again, I remind you, is the memory of God in you, your Holy Spirit. He is the answer to everything because he, he knows. He knows what the answer to everything is. And the answer to everything is right-minded. It's Christ's mind. Not paying attention to the world, not believing in the world of body minds, and not personalizing anything in this world of body minds, not yourself and not what you see, but realizing that you're no longer attached to the outcome. You're no longer attached to anything in this world, but you realize you're connected to all of it because everything in this entire universe is a misperceived projection of you. When seen correctly, you see everything as a, the memory of the voice for God, an echo of the voice for God. Why? Because it's an echo of your Holy Spirit calling you to return to knowingly being the love you are. The ego does not know what a real question is, although it asks an endless number. Why, why, why? Yet you can learn this as you learn to question the value of the ego and therefore establish your ability to evaluate its questions. What is it for? Is it from a place of love or is it a cry for love? When the ego tempts you to sickness, do not ask the Holy Spirit to heal the body. Now, this is a very, very, very important fundamental understanding. And if you get this line, you get the course in essence. So when the ego tempts you, to sickness, you don't ask the Holy Spirit to heal the body. Why? Because healing the body is healing the effect. But this would merely be to accept the ego's belief that a body is the proper aim of healing. Okay, so you're not asking it to heal the effect. Ask rather that the Holy Spirit teach you the right perception of the body so that you can see it correctly. For perception alone can be distorted. Only perception can be sick because only perception can be wrong. So ask your prayer to Holy Spirit is, show me another way to see this, that I may recognize why it appears that my body is sick, because actually it's my sick mind projecting a sick body. When my mind heals, the projection thereof heals, and even if it doesn't seem to heal on the outer level, it is my recognition of my true self that I've now recognized through this gift of illness. Now the illness becomes a gift because it forced me to go deeper and see it another way. Ultimately, all bodies die. Okay, so don't now hold yourself to ransom that you've been told you're going to die of X, Y, Z, or then there's something wrong with your mind. The ego will then try and say to you, look, you haven't healed completely, you see, um, and that's why you're still sick. No, you just let it go and you surrender to that. It's your time to go. And you now willingly release this body mind identity projection and you return the truth of you the self the holy self the holy son of god self the christ mind to the christ mind and and return in full awareness to that which is truth which is the holy the holy sonship that which you are a part of and can never be apart from wrong preception to precede is the wish that things be not as that things be as they are not. Now, don't imagine that you know this is some sort of airy fairy, wishy washy, up in the sky concept. We're constantly everything you resist in the world, everything you find fault with in the world, is wrong perception. So when you're fighting about the political party, the government, the war. If, you know, whatever it is in this world, the fuel price, the virus, the vaccine, the economy, the presidents, the Illuminati, the Anunnaki, or whatever it is in this world, you've made it real. So you want to see it another way. You want to see it correctly. You want to either see it with the right-minded perception of the Holy Spirit, which is corrected perception. 
as opposed to wrong-minded egoic perception. The reality of everything is totally harmless because total harmlessness is the condition of its reality. It is also the condition of your awareness of its reality, of your awareness of its reality, becoming aware of being awareness itself. You do not have to seek reality. It will seek you and find you. Here's the important thing. It will seek you and find you when you meet its condition. And that's what this course is doing. It's preparing you for the conditions where Holy Spirit takes the final step. The memory takes over and you remember what you are. Its conditions are part of what it is. Its conditions are part of what you are. And this part only is up to you. The rest is of itself. You need to do so little because your part is so powerful that it'll bring the whole to you. Accept then your little part and let the whole be yours. Again, let me reinforce this. Your little part is the willingness to see in you. And when you're willing to see in you, the memory of God, God's voice, Holy Spirit, rises up in you and awakens your awareness to being awareness itself, the essence, the essential nature of that which created you. God is your essence and you become aware of that awareness because you are pure awareness. And once God takes the final step, that awareness returns to God's consciousness, pure consciousness. And you awaken in full remembrance of being the Holy Son, one of billions of sons, the extension of God's love, which is the sonship. And you are that. This is, this is a beautiful teaching. This, this, this next paragraph, this whole paragraph is just stupendous, just unbelievable. Listen to this with your heart as I speak these words. Wholeness heals because it is of the mind. And what are you? Mind. Holy mind, complete mind, Christ mind. All forms of sickness, even unto death, are physical expressions of fear, awakening. So what is cancer? Physical expressions of the fear awakening, which means the fear dissolving. So even something like cancer or something that's terminally going to destroy you is actually when the recognition of the self is made known through the illness. It's expression, physical expressions of the fear awakening. There are attempts to reinforce sleeping out of fear of waking but you've now transcended it. So these attempts to reinforce sleep out of, out of the fear of awakening can no longer take place. You've now transcended the purpose of the disease. And even though the disease may end your body, the purpose no longer ends your awareness. Your awareness rises through it. This is a pathetic way of trying not to see by rendering the facilities for seeing ineffectual. Once you've transcended it, it no longer affects you. The body is going to be put down anyway. And the truth of you doesn't die, returns to the real you, the Christ self. Okay. Rest in peace is a blessing for the living, not the dead. Because rest comes from waking, not from sleeping. And that's when you can look back on all your issues, your challenges, your hurts, your, your, all those words that people use to abuse you, uh, whether it be sexually or racially or whatever the case was, and you just realize it was those horrible experiences I had that made me search out a new way. It was my illness, my disease, my disabilities, whatever the case may be, brought me to the understanding. I am not a body. I am free. I'm still as God created me. And this temporal device, through its abuse and its, and its attacks and attacks upon it, or illnesses upon it actually brought me to that understanding. I'm so grateful for that, but I don't buy into any of it. I choose to now be an instrument for God so I can transcend the illness and continue living simply to share the beauty of what we are. Sleep is withdrawing. Waking is joining. And what wakes? The mind. 
Dreams are illusions of joining because they reflect the ego's distorted notions about what joining is. What is the ego's distorted notions? Two bodies joining. Make love as opposed to extend love. Yet the Holy Spirit too has use for sleep and can use dreams on behalf of waking if you will let him. Let me read that line again. Yet the Holy Spirit too has use for sleep and can use dreams on behalf of waking if you let him. Both this awake dream or the nighttime dream. So this is why I say, before you go to bed at night, the last thing you should say is, Holy Spirit, I give you this time of sleep and rest where I may rest in peace and you show me another way to see my subconscious guilt, bring it up in my dream so that I may see it with your eyes, with Holy Spirit right-minded vision. How you wake is the sign of how you've used sleep. So if you wake up disturbed, you gave it up to the ego mind. That's why I make a conscious decision every time you go to sleep at night or nap in the afternoon or whenever. So Holy Spirit, I give you this time to use my mind to bring me back to the awareness that I am. To whom did you give it? And at which teacher did you place your mind? Whenever you wake desperately, it was not given to the Holy Spirit. Choose again. Don't go into guilt now and beat yourself up and say, oh, the ego won. Choose again. Only when you awake and joyously have you utilized sleep according to his purpose. You can indeed be drugged by sleep if you have misused it on behalf of sickness. That's why I never go to bed angry. And if you are angry, then just say, Holy Spirit, show me another way. Show me another way to see this. Show me another way that this anger may may bring to the light of my Christ awareness that which I'm misperceiving. Sleep is no more a form of death than death is a form of unconsciousness. Yet you can't be completely unconscious whilst you just dissolve and disappear. Complete unconsciousness is impossible. Complete unconsciousness is impossible. The self is even there, even though the subconscious false self, the ego self, you may not remember it during deep, deep sleep. Why? Because during deep, deep sleep, the self is made known to itself. And the ego self, which is memory, can't remember what the self knows. So when you really have those deep, deep sleep nights where you don't remember a dream at all, that's when you truly rested in peace, RIP. Okay. In other words, the self has returned to the Christ self and has been recharged. That's why you wake up in the morning after a very deep, deep sleep. You wake up rested. Why? Because even this illusionary body, which is not real, the essence of it is returned to the Christ mind. And when it reemerges, even as this projection, the true you is rested in peace. You can rest in peace only because you are awake. The Christ mind is a part of you that is permanently awake, permanently conscious of itself as the son of God. That part is the real you. That is the Christ you. The rest of you, body, mind, idea, history, past, memories, future fears, that is unreal. And so a part of you is always at peace. And so when peace arises in you, it's not that you found it and brought it into you. It's that you've taken off the layers that are the obstacles to peace. And peace as the essence of what you are is revealed. Healing is the release from fear of waking and the substitution of the decision to wake. So healing is waking. The decision to wake is a reflection of the will to love, to be yourself knowingly, since all healing involves replacing fear with love. And what are you? Love. The Holy Spirit cannot distinguish amongst degrees of error. For if he taught that one form of sickness is more serious than another, he would be teaching that one error can be more real than another. So a headache and a cancer to the Holy Spirit is identical. His function is to distinguish only between the false and the true, replacing the false with the true or seeing it another way. The ego, which always wants to weaken the mind, tries to separate it from the body in an attempt to destroy it. What a circular reference in biting itself in the bum, like the Roombus 
a snake that co co coils upon its own and eats itself. Yet the ego actually believes that it is protecting it. How is it protecting it? By destroying it. Makes no sense. This is because the ego believes that the mind is dangerous. So it'd rather kill the body than let the mind take over the awake mind. And that would be, and that would make mindless, and that to make mindless is to heal. Sorry, let me re read that sentence again. This is because the ego believes that mind is dangerous and that to make mindless is to heal. So he's aware that if you become awake and aware to mind that you are whole mind, only mind within God's mind, in other words, you are Christ mind within God's mind, you would awaken to that reality and nothing, is, nothing exists anymore. But to make mindless is impossible, even when you sleep, since it would mean to make nothing out of what God created. And what God created is only the only reality. The ego despises weakness, even though it makes every effort to induce it in you by making you believe you're not good enough. You've known you've been rejected, you've been abandoned, and blah, 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 blah. And you believe the attack thoughts and the judgments that other ego voices make, and you absorb them and you take them upon yourself, especially if they're close to you, family, friends, and so forth. You take those insults and you make it real and you beat yourself up as if what other egos say is true. Put your hand up and say, no, thank you. Like, don't listen to your own thoughts. Don't listen to the words of others. Don't listen to the words of anyone else. Only listen to your inner guide, your inner guide that is always sharing with you the love and joy and peace that you are. You are God's holy son, deservant of eternal blissful joy. The ego wants only what it hates. Why? Because it keeps you bound, fighting with the idea of good and bad in the wrong-mindedness part of the mind. Holy Spirit just takes you to right-mindedness where you don't take anything in this world serious. Everything in this world, puppies, cats, girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands, wives, children's parents are designed that you have emotional connections with them, empathic connection to them. And they're designed because you want to be loved and accepted by all of them. And therefore, you want to accept and love all of them. And you want them all to treat you as the way God treats you. And no, none of them can. Why? Because they're trapped in their own fears, desires, hatreds, and delusions. And they're going to project their delusions on you. So as you projected yours onto them. And now you're expecting them to love you unconditionally as God does. But they're false illusions made to capture your feelings. Let them go. No judgment. And be judged by them. Don't judge them. To the ego, this is perfectly sensible. Believing in the power of attack, the ego wants attack and often attacks even the very thing which it is. The Bible enjoins you to be perfect, be thyself knowing, to heal all errors, sin, errors, to take no thought of the body as, a, as separate and to accomplish all things in my name, in the name of the Christ, yourself. Okay. Not Jesus as an externalized being, objectified. This is not my name alone. Here is here are Jesus, here are the Christ mind explaining. For ours is a shared identification. You are the Christ. The part of you that you've externalized and objectified is the part of you that can't, you can't remember. Bring it inwards. Be thyself knowing it. Be willing to know thyself willingly, knowingly. The name of God's son is one. And you are enjoined to do the works of love because we share this oneness. This is the awake mind talking to the dreaming mind saying we're one mind. You're a localized body mind thinking you're this person. I'm the localized body mind you call Jesus that's awoken to be the Christ mind, which is the awake part of the complete mind, and I'm now calling the rest of my mind to awaken to the one self. Our minds are whole because they are one. If you are sick, you are withdrawing from me. If you believe you are sick because you can't be, yet you cannot withdraw from me alone. You can only withdraw from yourself and me because we're one. Not joined as one, we're one. You have surely begun to realize that this is a very practical course and one that means exactly what it says. As some of you 
borne testimony that as you were willing to see a new relationships with your partners, with your family, with your friends, with your colleagues, magically changed. People that were no, never interested in what you're learning all of a sudden have joined with you and in actual fact are asking you to join with them. Why? Where two of you are gathered in my name, Christ, one, awake name of the self. There I am also. Why? Because it's all me, the Christ. Okay. I would not ask you to do things you cannot do. And it is impossible that I could do things you cannot do. Why? Because we're one and the same. Given this, and given this quite literally, nothing can prevent you from doing exactly what I ask. And that's the inner calling, call for love. And everything argues for your doing it. I give you no limits because God lays none upon you. When you limit yourself, we are not of one mind, and that is sickness. Yet sickness is not of the body, but of the mind. All forms of sickness are signs that the mind is split and does not accept a unified purpose. Now, if you remain sick, but you've transcended in the awareness, then realize that's just the body playing out. It's played out its purpose, and now you offer it to Holy Spirit, and the miracle comes. And eventually we're all dying. So don't think, oh, I failed. If the day I'm, die I'm dying today, I failed. No, this was a temporal illusion. You're putting the body down just like Jesus did. And you're transcending it and ascending your consciousness. There's nowhere to take the body. The body can't ascend. It will just evaporate and disappear in the light of awareness at best. The unification of purpose then is the Holy Spirit's only way of healing. The unification of purpose, one mind in the same direction. This is because it is the only level to at which healing means anything. The re-establishment of meaning in a chaotic thought system is the way to heal it. The re-establishment of meaning in a chaotic thought system. So right-mindedness. Your task is only to meet the conditions for meaning. Since meaning itself is of God, the only meaning is you are, you are the love of God. Yet your return to meaning is essential to his. Okay, so let's go back a little sentence. Unification of purpose then is the Holy Spirit's only way of healing. This is because the only level at which healing means anything is at the level of Holy Spirit, right mind. The reestablishment the re of meaning in a chaotic thought system, wrong system, wrong mind, which doesn't actually exist, is the way to heal it, bringing it back to right mind. So your task is only to meet the conditions for meaning, right-mindedness. And what's the condition for meaning, for, for willingness, for true meaning? The willingness to let it be shone upon you. You've got one function to do that. You've got to practice forgiveness so that you realize that this is no longer real. It's all you. And by practicing forgiveness, you transcend those experiences of pain, fear, sin, and guilt into the realization they're all designed to bring me into awareness. Okay. Now, yet your return to meaning is essential to his. Now, through understanding, because your meaning is a part of his meaning, your healing then is a part of his health, since it is part of his wholeness. He cannot lose this, but you cannot know it. So you can forget to acknowledge it in your brothers and your sisters and your mother, your father, spouse, children, colleagues, the world. Okay. So you cannot lose it, but you cannot know it. So the minute you've attacked a brother, you won't know it. Not in them, not in yourself, because there's only one self. Yet it is still his will for you. And his will, and his will must stand forever and in all things, for everything is in God as you are as you are the Holy Son of God. So remember, just give your willingness and be prepared to let go of everything you believe in and be shown another way to see this. And trust that inner voice which uses your thoughts to speak to you in a most silent but directive way and so that you can be yourself knowingly and be yourself lovingly as the love extension of God. Stop there. And then again, what we'll do is this coming Sunday, we will do 
um, chapter 9. Chapter 9 consists of only eight, eight verses. So what we'll do this, this coming Sunday is I'm going to try and cover 1, 2, 3, and 4. If not, I'll just do 1, 2, and 3 this Sunday. So um, this Sunday, again, same time. Maybe we'll start an hour earlier, depending on load shedding schedule in Johannesburg. Um, but we'll then continue with chapter 9 this Sunday. I hope this has brought some clarity and understanding to you. You know, take from this what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Don't argue with it. Don't sit and try and compare yourself to me or my notes to yours. I'm a rogue. I understand that. I don't have to try and be spiritual to transcend understanding into knowing. It's just this is the authentic only way I know how even the word authentic you throw away. Um, this is just a temporal illusion of an embodiment which isn't true the recognition of the self is here the joy of self is here um, don't need to prove this to anyone just it's this is my joy this is why i do it there's nothing to sell i offer this freely i offer no courses there's no weekend seminars it's just this is just me being myself sharing it because i love to do this um, not promoting anything not selling anything just use it don't use it if it works for you pass it on you know, and just recognize all this, this too shall pass, meaning that the truth remains and the self shall be known again because a part of you is never left and is still consciously aware of being consciously aware in God. Have a wonderful week ahead and uh, recognize that the love I am recognizes the love you are.